ho ho, and welcome to Arithmetica! Hello and welcome to Arithmetica. Oh, and by the way, thanks for the intro. Starting with this video, I shall present the basic notion of a mathematical model. And as you might have guessed, it will have a festive theme. In essence, a mathematical model is a description of a system that is expressible in terms of mathematical concepts. Many models describe physical systems, such as in the study of physics, engineering and the natural sciences. The latter, for example, includes models of population growth and their interaction with other species, as well as their environment, where logistic models are commonly used, such as in marine biology. However, it should also be understood that non-physical systems, such as those in social sciences, also benefit from developing models. There is no formal agreement to the exact format of a report for a mathematical model, but a reasonable approach could be of the following. Specify purpose. Here you essentially define the problem that you wish to investigate and collect any relevant data. Create the model. This is where we can state the modeling assumptions, choose variables and parameters, and begin the preliminary mathematics, e.g. establish mathematical relationships between the variables, etc. Apply the mathematics. As the heading suggests, at this stage, we solve any equations, draw any suitable graphs, and derive results. Interpret results. Here we analyse the results of our derivations and interpret into the context of the problem. Evaluate outcomes. Does the model compare well to reality? If there are any discrepancies, then it might be necessary to adjust some of the assumptions of the model or remove some, or possibly add new assumptions. If the model is adjusted, then one will need to return to the cycle above. The first model will often be based on assumptions that are idealizations that may turn out to be unrealistic, but for a first model, it is generally best to start simple. You can always refine the modeling assumptions at a later time when evaluating your results. Moreover, a simple model will often be a lot more revealing about certain features, despite perhaps lacking some required details. For example, neglecting air resistance for an initial model of some physical system will greatly simplify the mathematics and might be a reasonable modelling assumption if, say, air resistance was expected to be negligible. But even if it is able to predict some of the key characteristics of the system, there may be inconsistencies that could motivate you in exploring a suitable adjustment to the next or some future version of the model. So, now that we have some notion of what a mathematical model is, let's begin by presenting with a festive theme on developing a simple first model. During the month of December, many people around the world participate in the festivities of Christmas and in celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Although Christmas time is also celebrated by those of whom do not necessarily follow the Christian faith, but instead place an alternative interpretation. Happy Holidays! 
part of the festivities also include the many children around the world to attain much excitement and anticipation of the arrival of a somewhat larger than life jolly old man with a bushy white beard of whom comes visiting on Christmas Eve, while all dressed in red and white. And although the children may never see him, they certainly look forward to the passing of Christmas Eve, for it is when this mysterious jolly man, otherwise known as Father Christmas or Santa Claus, is busy delivering presents on the night before Christmas Day to all of the children around the world, or at least those of whom have been good. It is nonetheless an impressive feat to achieve given the limited availability of time and the distance that one might imagine necessary in order to deliver these presents to the households of all the children around the world, in which Father Christmas's sleigh would need to cover. Thus one question that might well present itself could be, just how fast does Father Christmas, together with his elves and reindeer, have to travel during this time in order to deliver all of these presents around the world. It is thus the purpose of this report to attempt to provide an answer, although we shall instead focus on a related question. What is the average speed necessary for Father Christmas to travel around the world so to allow him and his companions the means to deliver Christmas presents to all of the presumably good children on the night before Christmas Day? We consider the Christian faith in the context of Father Christmas, specifically with regards to his annual endeavour to deliver all the Christmas presents to every child on his list. In particular, this will require investigating the various statistical measures such as the current world population and the population of children worldwide, as well as a general notion of the area of ground that Father Christmas's sleigh from rooftop to rooftop we need to traverse in order to complete his objective of delivering said presents in the allotted amount of time as tradition dictates. The model considers Father Christmas's journey around the world during his busiest time of year, the night before Christmas Day. Both the number of households visited and the region of the Earth's surface covered during Father Christmas's journey will be incorporated into the model. The final mathematical expression will determine the average speed of the sleigh travelled during Santa's journey. Consequently, the model expresses a number of parameter values which will require the necessary statistical measures determined beforehand. For a first simple model, here is my list of assumptions. Number one, Father Christmas only delivers to children belonging to families of whom celebrate Christmas. Number two, we define a child as an individual of whom is under the age of 15 years, i.e. between 0 and 14 years of age inclusive. Number 3. Father Christmas traverses the entirety of land above sea level, i.e. of dry land. Number 4. Each household is modelled as a single point on the Earth's surface. Number 5. Each household is uniformly distributed across the entire region in which Father Christmas's sleigh traverses. Number 6. Each household is centred on an area of land that can be approximated reasonably well as a square region on the Earth's surface. Number 7. Where possible, we assume that Father Christmas chooses the shortest distance possible e.g. between each neighbouring household that he visits. Number 8. The Earth will be modelled as a sphere. Sorry, Flat Earthers. Number 9. 
Father Christmas traverses the world from east to west. Number 10. Father Christmas starts at the international date line and travels through the time zones around the world. Number 11. Father Christmas must limit his travels to during the hours of the sleeping children. Number 12. Father Christmas uses the total available amount of time for travelling between each household. List of parameters. Depending on the level of research that one is willing and able to pursue, and the information pertaining to this endeavour that may be uncovered, one can approach this problem in a number of different ways. However, from our list of assumptions, one could proceed as follows. In order to ascertain an estimate for the average speed of Santa's sleigh, we shall determine estimates of the total distance travelled together with the time available to achieve Santa's objective. The average speed is then calculated by dividing the former with the latter of these two estimates. Let's start with the total distance travelled. This is primarily dependent on the number of households that Father Christmas is to visit, as well as their locations around the world. The former will have a positive correlation to the total number of children on Father Christmas's list, in accordance to assumption 1. The latter would be remarkably difficult to determine precisely, but is nonetheless greatly simplified via assumption 5. Now, the average family size will vary from country to country, but if we divide our to-be-determined estimate of the number of children, as defined by assumption 1, by an estimate for the average number of children per household, then we will have an estimate for the number of households around the world that Father Christmas is to visit. To estimate the total distance travelled, we can first attempt to estimate the distance between households to be visited. By assumptions 3 and 8, we can estimate the surface area of dry land which we assume provides an agreeable foundation to build structures upon, such as residential areas. Dividing our estimate of the surface area of dry land with our estimate of the total number of households for which Father Christmas is to visit, we then obtain, in accordance to assumption 5, an estimate of the surface area for which each household is located. It then follows from assumptions 4 and 6 that taking the square root of this result will provide us an estimate for the typical distance between neighbouring households to be visited by Father Christmas. Assumptions 4, 5 and 7 then justifies us in estimating the total distance travelled by Santa's sleigh by multiplying together our estimate for the total number of households to be visited with the estimate for the distance between each such household. It remains to determine an estimate for the total amount of time for Father Christmas's journey around the world. By assumption 11, Father Christmas limits his travel to during the hours of the sleeping children. This obviously needs to be considered for each time zone, but in each case, we'll likely start from the latest bedtime on Christmas Eve to the earliest rise in the morning on Christmas Day. In addition to assumption 11, we also have assumptions 9 and 10 that allows for an extra 24 hours by starting at the international date line and travelling from east to west, thereby providing the maximum amount of time to circumnavigate the world while satisfying assumption 11. Assuming Santa uses the total available time provided to him, as argued above, we thus divide our estimated total distance travelled 
by our sum total of available travel time to obtain an estimate of the average speed of Santa's sleigh. We are now in the position to establish our preliminary mathematical relationships as the main component in developing the model. And what better way but for our special guest to lend us a hand? From the list of parameters, we have denoted the total world population by PW and the world population of children by PC. Together with alpha as the proportion of the world population that are children, it follows from assumption two that That is, the world population of children as those individuals of whom are under the age of 15 years. Referring to our list of parameters once more, it follows that of those children, there is an estimate to the value of beta PC of whom belongs to Christian households. Thus, Now, from assumption one, we are required to consider children who belong to families of whom celebrate Christmas. However, this does not limit our interest to just Christian families, since there are those of whom do not identify themselves as Christian, despite celebrating Christmas in some manner, inclusive of the promotion of Father Christmas to their children. Thus, by assumption one, we must include such families in our model. From our list of parameters, we have denoted the proportion of the world population of whom are non-Christian celebrators of Christmas by the Greek lowercase letter gamma. This therefore provides an extra gamma PC, which can be added to equation two, such that we obtain where PV denotes the total population of those Father Christmas provides presents for. And so by assumptions one and two, is the total number of children under the age of 15 years who unknowingly receive a visit from Father Christmas. As in our list of parameters, let SW, SL and L be respectively the surface area of the world the surface area of dry land, i.e. landmass above sea level, and the proportion of the total surface area of the world, that is, of dry land. We can therefore express SL in terms of SW and L by the equation If then HV denotes the number of households worldwide in which Father Christmas visits to deliver the presents, it follows from assumptions three and four that the surface area per household to be visited, denoted by SH, is given by Thus by assumptions four and six, the estimated distance between neighbouring households to be visited, denoted by dh, and as illustrated here, is given by Moreover, as nc denotes the average number of children worldwide per household, it follows from assumption 1 that
we now consider the available time that Father Christmas has to complete his travels in distributing presents around the world. Thus from assumptions 9, 10 and 11 we have the equation where as stated in the list of parameters TC, TW and T are respectively the estimated duration of sleep of each child in any given time zone, the time it takes for planet Earth to complete one revolution on its axis and the total available amount of time for Father Christmas to deliver all of the presents around the world. From our preliminary work, together with assumption 7, it therefore follows that the total distance travelled is estimated to be the number of households to be visited multiplied by the estimated average distance between each neighbouring household. That is, also by denoting the average speed of Santa's sleigh during its travel around the world by V, we thus obtain a formula of this average speed given by Thank you for watching the first video that has served to introduce our objective in determining an estimate for the average speed of Father Christmas's sleigh. Oh, and a special thanks to our very special guest. In the next video, we will continue from where we left off and drive a formula for our model. And so until next time, it's goodbye from Arithmetica. And a goodbye from Santa.